What's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a continuation. This is 30 minute sessions episode 8, but it's going to be a continuation of 7. Stop, hold up if you didn't watch 7. Right? That's why the scouts go out to scout these players. And let me tell you, they're not just looking at the box score. They're looking at other okay. intangibles. Okay? They're looking at other things that go on that these they have a whole have list for every position that they need to check off to see if exactly. they meet that criteria. Yes, absolutely. And this is exactly what's going to happen next year. OK, if Pickett does well with whatever team he's on. Right. Let's just hypothetically say he's on Houston and Houston kind of turns it around and the Giants are in the doghouse. Right. Guess what they're going to say? Well, you had a chance. We to, had a chance to get, yeah. And you didn't choose him. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Right. If Justin Fields goes off and has a better career than Daniel Jones. Guess what they're going to say? You had a chance to pick yeah, Mac Jones yeah. and Justin Fields. But we did. not Yeah. And so we want to sit here and 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 wonder because there's no bona fide star that we know of because we don't know their names. There's no Justin Herbert who was touted for two years because he was going to be the second, probably the second quarterback taken in 2019. He decided to stay with and play with his brother. An admirable thing to do, right? Your brother's coming in to play college football with you. I would probably done the same thing. Plus, you probably didn't like the teams who were down there to draft you anyway. So I probably was, oh, Giants, screw that. I'm not going there. You know, stay, stay in Oregon, you know, where the girls are pretty and, I, and I'm a big man on yeah. campus. Mm -hmm. so don't tell me right now because the Giants are – because if Malik Willis, I think that's the kid from Liberty, comes in Malik and, Willis, and yes. the next Lamar Jackson, and we're Could sitting be. here still wondering about Daniel Jones, people are going to be like, well, why didn't you pick him? Oh well, well you know, last year we did. We thought they were weak class, so you know, you, you got to make your own assessments, right? And I hear a friend of ours put out a mock draft. One, a little too early. Two, you don't pick a center in the top ten picks. Not when you can get a guy like Jeff Saturday, undrafted free agent, Sean O'Hara, undrafted free agent, Nick Gates, undrafted free agent. Oh, and the the other narrative is, well, we'll just draft Lindenbaum or whatever his name is, Tyler Lindenbaum, and then we'll play him at guard. We'll play him at guard. You know what that does? That hinders his ability to play guard. You've just weakened a position because the guy plays center. He was drafted as a center. Now his position you want to change, which he's not – he didn't play uh, all year or has spar uh, uh, sporadic duty being a guard, and you're going to tell me that now you're going to play him at guard? Because, you you know, you want to keep Nick Gates at center? How about you move Nick Gates, who moved up and down the line, to guard? Like – Thinking like that is what I, I think, want to have. I love, I love, I love your points, and I know it wasn't a shot fired, but at the end of the day, like I think it was. Uh, shout out to Big Pat, y'all. Make sure you go check out his draft. Uh, I know you didn't mean it like that, but no, 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 I just no, no. Think it, that it, it was a great content. mock draft. Yeah, great, great mock draft. draft. I just don't agree with picking a center at that early. That's I all. just think that that's what a lot of a lot of people looking at Tyler looks at. I mean, like if you look at any uh, any expert thing they have him at 15 they had him have him at 17 but i just think with the need and what this guy can end up being they value him at a top 10 pick and i'm gonna well, have to agree with them at that and well, and yeah i, I agree like with this. you also it's like it's it's high to take a center but if you have if, if you, you have that build, if you feel that that center could change the the, the 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 line just by drafting him and be that kind of change in the line that we need with the Andrew Thomas there and maybe getting another another guy there at pick nine or something. I have to go back and watch his video. I haven't yet to watch it, but um, I don't know who he had his pick with those two picks, but you, you get Tyler. Right. I think his his strategy was not to defend Pat, but I think all Giants fan strategy and where they rank Tyler is they rank him at that, that eight and that nine range because of the fact that we need him plus two. If you really strip it down, they value him at, at, at that high of a player. You well, know what I'm saying? I look, I look at it like this, right? If that Neil guy is on the board and you draft Lindenbaum over Neil, mm -hmm. the next GM needs to be fired because tackle is mm -hmm. a premium position, okay? Tackle is, is what we need right now more than I say a center because yes. right now we have Nick Gates, who, by the way, came from Nebraska and, you know, works his way to Giants, Giants yeah. ranks to be a center, right? And yeah. so for me – I can't. I'm not. You know. I don't. I would watched, you. Would uh, you. Would you think the concept of the mindset is draft Lindeball, move him to Gord? Not yeah. Lindeball. I'm talking about moving Gates to Gord. If you if you draft Lindenbaum at yes. number whatever you want to do, you whatever don't move him to guard. You leave him not at Lindenbaum. I'm talking about Nick Gates. 
right, right. they get to come back. You move him to Yes. When you draft Lindenbaum, you leave him at center. You move Gates to guard because yes. right now, right because a you're going to need a guard because Hernandez may not be here. Right, you know Shane Lemieux is coming back because he's under contract. Whether or not you mm-hmm. like him, that's on you. You have Isaiah Wilson, who I'm not that's saying you don't draft a guy because of Isaiah Wilson, but you have him. Keep the kid at center. Stop putting. Stop forcing guys to change positions. It stunts I get, their I get your point. Yeah. You know just I mean? to, just <laughs> draft the draft the draft the tackle draft the draft the guard leave leave the position at center because yet alone now we're developing you and I get it a center is the hardest outside of left tackle I believe center is probably the hardest position to play you know what I'm right. saying center is the hardest position to play on the line you know, but my, my, my only point is sorry to cut you off my only point is this. if you draft a, it's like drafting a defensive end right that put his hand in the dirt and then say oh we're gonna play you a D tackle. Yeah, it's kind of like the, you don't it's, understand it's, the muscle it's messing memory. up the developing stage. It's kind of like Daniel Jones having three different offensive coordinators in a sense. You're learning too much. Like focus this. on the system. Let's see if this analogy works. Okay, it's like asking a waiter to now be a cook. Okay, they they yes they both work in the restaurant. Yes, they both do different jobs and they handle food. But you're going to ask a waiter who knows how to wait tables to now switch with a cook. Do you think the food's going to be good? They're gonna need. There's gonna be a learning curve there on both ends. And but what do happens? Do you think is, that? Do you think that Nick Gates playing center is an easier transition to move him to guard? You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. He played center, you know. Because he played guard already for yeah, the Giants. Exactly that too. Yeah. And they forced him to play center because he they wanted to make him versatile. Then they said, "Well, he's playing center well enough. Let's let him learn the position." So now you and you signed him to an extension. Now me. Personally, if he's one of you, I want the best five to play, but I don't yeah. want to draft a first round pick and have him wait to then play center. They did it with, with they did it with Weston Richburg. You know how terrible Weston Richburg was yeah. at guard? He was terrible. When he went to center, he had a better season, his second season, than he did at guard because everything's different, right? If he didn't pull in Iowa, he, now you're going to have him pull to the left or the right. I'm telling you, man, muscle memory. OK, when you play something for four years, it gets ingrained in you. It's instinctual at some points. You're going to take a guy and now move him to guard because then why not draft a guard? Right. Because if you're going to do that anyways, why not draft a guard? Because you can essentially what you're saying is any guard can play center and any center can play guard. Right. So you be draft- in the Go sense ahead. of. Uh- We're so leaning on this offensive line, and it's so crazy because we've been fixing this offensive line for the past nine years. We still haven't got it right. Personally, so, this is what I would do. This is what what I would you do. do? I would take Neil if he's there, or the okay. guard from the guard from S, the tackle from SC. Big tackle. Okay. We need them. The second thing I would do. Two options I have with the second first round pick. I'm either trading down and acquiring more picks to to do what we did this year for Daniel Jones next year. Right, saying okay. hey. If we're not going to keep Daniel Jones, I need to acquire draft assets so I can move up or down next year with no problem to get a quarterback, right? That's what I would possibly do with the second pick in the first round. Now, if I don't move down, I'm taking the next, the best defensive player out there, the best edge rusher available that's in the top 10 that's left because the Giants need to build this defense. Everyone wants to build, you know, a second round pick. Yes, two second round picks are developing right now, but we need another cornerstone player and why not get him? You know, because we don't know if that we know we know that there's a lot of first round defensive ends and outside linebackers. I would move down mm-hmm. and get Drake out of USC, Drake Jackson, Jake, okay. Drake Johnson, who was about six foot three, two hundred and forty pounds and had four and a half sacks, right? I have to go look him up. And he's from SC and they say he's a first round pick. Now if you don't want to pick him that high, then trade down to a quarterback needy team. That's once Ryan, once the picket kid goes, you know, the quarterbacks are going to start to heat up because once the first one goes, they're going to be like, well, we need to get these top leader guys, right? And three guys from all the draft guys I've looked at are going in the first round Malik Willis, Pickett, and the Carroll kid right now. Now that could change from January to April when they have combines, pro days, and all that other stuff. That could change. So my point is if a team needs that's in the middle rounds, needs a quarterback, I'm going to say, hey, you know, like I did with Chicago. And then at that point, I'm not drafting a receiver or something I've already invested in. I'm getting the best defensive player available because I feel like, yes, you have Ziz Ojolari. You got him in the second round. You're locked out with him in the second round. Yeah, right? he's a stud. 
because you traded out hoping that he would be there. Even the even the Giants said they were hoping yeah. that he would be there. Yeah, but they traded yeah. out, and he was there, and they picked him. Now that guy is proving he already has the the rookie sack record. We already talked about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. That. He has the rookie giant sack record, which technically is held by LT, but they didn't count sacks in 1981. So BJ Hill was the sack leader, right? So now you have Ozizo Joy with six and a half. He's probably going to end up around nine or ten, right? You bring in a bona fide stud that you can get your hands on, one of the top three defensive ends or, or outside linebackers, to bring this defense to the next level. Right, Mm -hmm. because we don't know. Maybe the Chicago Bears end up with a third pick or fourth pick, and you know the Texans take a um, a quarterback. I forget who the third is. Maybe the Jets or something like that. They'll take Thibodeau. The Lions, maybe. Right, the Lions are first. The Texans are second. The Jets are third. Uh, I think Seattle is fourth, and then um, Giants fans might hate me for this, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get our pick before Chicago's pick. (laughs) <laughs> true. That will be that will be the pick, bowl, the pick bowl will be happening. I mean, Green Bay is playing Chicago. Chicago is a terrible team, but they 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 have some studs on defense that shows up sometimes. And I then they decide what? to show up. You know, they scored twenty two points in their last endeavor. Twenty two. How many did mm-hmm. we score? We haven't scored. We didn't score twenty two points in two it's games. The last time we scored over twenty points. I don't even remember. It was like three weeks ago. Some games ago, right? Yeah. Like, in I 2021, mean, Adam, in 2021, we can't even score 20 points. What the fuck? Even Carl Banks said teams can cough or, or trip their way to 20 points, and we can't find a way to get to 20 points. And so this team needs an overhaul. And I'm saying for the Giants this year, next year, they're not, they're not going to have a lot of – they're not. They're going to have money to spend, $40 million, $50 million, whatever. Their teams are going to have 80 90 you know, a hundred million, right? And they're going to be able to get the premium free agents. Giant fans, be ready for bargain basement shopping. Okay, you're going to get guys who are either the Will Hernandez type guys, guys who may not make it on their team, want to go out and explore free agency, and may not get a lot of a lot of dough. So maybe you bring back Will Hernandez if he's the best guy you think is out there. I don't because I've seen enough of that guy to say. He's not built for this offense. He's built for a downhill offense. He can't move. So there's a lot that needs to go on. Um, I know we went on this tangent. I know that we're talking about draft already. I wouldn't give me, I would give me not three players on give me Go three ahead. players on this team in order. Number one, the, the person you want just gone. Remove the locker, remove his uniform, remove the nameplate. You just want off this team. Your top three players you don't want to see here next year. Billy you Price. I don't want to see you on the roster. Billy okay. Price, I don't want to see next year. Nate Solder. Yeah. Actually, okay. take off Billy Price because he won't be here anyway. So take okay. Nate Solder. I don't want to see. He's number one. Okay. I don't want to see him. One, yes. I don't want to see him next year. Okay. The number okay. two is I don't want to see Ozizo. Uh, not Ozizo. O'Shane Zimnez here. O'Shane, is number I two. absolutely agree. Get, get him. Get him out of my sights. Number and three would it be Riley Lorenzo? Riley, Riley Dixon. Dixon. Riley the Dixon. Hunter. He has been terrible. He has been absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay. Special Listen, the, the reason why the reason why I don't I, I the reason why I don't say Carter is because they didn't trade for Carter. They drafted him. They traded for Riley Dixon. Okay, mm. they traded a seventh round pick and gave him mad money, and he stinks. I don't want him anywhere near this team. Carter, I know is going to walk, but there are things that I mm. see in, in, in Lorenzo Carter that I could keep. He is a functional linebacker. Uh, and a disruptor. He doesn't get sacks. He just he does disrupt though and set the edge well. But if I can't get an upgrade in free, agency, I can see him coming back on a one year deal, prove a deal, whatever. So I'm not as mad about Carter. I know he's going to leave. But you ask my three. Those are the three I want gone. I want Nate Soder out of here. I want Shane Zimnitz out of here, and I want Riley Dixon out of here. Those three guys I don't mm-hmm. even want to see near the Giants. Now, other guys that I think may or may not be here. Well, judging by salary cap, Blake Martinez might be a cut. You know, Bradbury might be gone, and Sterling Shepard, I wouldn't mind seeing him go either because right now the, can't even be healthy. What's the biggest paycheck you pay Evan Ingram? What's the not biggest contract. paycheck? I'm not giving him more than, like, you know, I'm not paying him George Kittle money. I'm not paying him would Travis you say, money. Would you say 7.9 is on the cheap side? I would probably give him six. And the six reason why million, it's six million because I mean I think he's making more anyway. Six million so with incentives up to nine million. Right, right. But I don't bring him. I'm not bringing him back either. 
You know what? Yeah, you want yeah, me to get Riley Dixon? Fine. I don't want to see Evan Ingram. If you want me to switch one, yeah. I don't want to see Evan Ingram. That's what I was thinking. Like when you said Riley Dixon, I'm like over Carter, over Ingram. Like, like I get it. He's look, been bad, but they all been bad. But if you want me to switch yeah. one, gun to my head, Evan Ingram's gone too. I don't want him anywhere near this team. And everyone, this is another thing that that irks me. Is it bad for me to put Will Hernandez up there? No, no, not at all. Right. Not at all. He has like, he has, he has an employment for a second round pick. The thing that I and the thing that I am really upset about is when people give the excuse, well, what if he goes to another team and performs well? Who cares? I don't <laughs> care about that. That's like you said. That's like that's like somebody saying to you, "Hey, you know, if you go to that new job and perform well, your old job is going to miss you." They're not going to care. They're they got rid of you for a reason. Absolutely. So go go excel. Go do go go do you over another team. I don't care about yeah. that because of, you know it, 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 we hold on to these players as if like they're they're these you know heirlooms, these family heirlooms that can't be traded. You know, that's worth a perfect for it. Perfect, you know, perfect. Like, oh my God, we drafted him. He's got potential. He has been here four years and has done nothing. He was in like, trouble for no apparent reason. We're paying. Well, we're, well, obviously, we're not paying them, but we are paying them with our merch that we buy, with our with our game tickets that we buy. So, in the sense that we're paying these guys millions of dollars to underperform, right? And what has Evan Ingram done? He has two touchdowns. Yeah, he hasn't seen I the mean, end zone. Like, should you not, Adam? Give me a million dollars. I might get fucking hurt, but I, I'll go in at quarterback and try to make something happen. You know what I'm like, saying? Like not. I don't understand. I don't understand it. Like I don't understand it. Mm. Like we're sitting here waiting for a guy to be good. He's been here four years. We're waiting. You know how we knew Sean, that uh, Sean Barkley was good because the Barkley. first game he came out and ran 68 yards for a touchdown against the Jaguars. How hot? Wait, right, his first carry went for like 30 or 40, 45, I believe. Yeah, in the, in the preseason yeah. against the Browns, first carry yeah. was gone up the sideline, yep. over the gates. In the first game against the Jaguars, he had he oh, was struggling, yeah. and then all of a sudden he broke one up the sideline and brought yep. us right back in the game. Yep, like that, boom. And then all the announcers was like, that's why you dropped him number two overall. Right, right. Now, of course, you know, revisionist history, I would never do that. Yeah, yeah I'm sure all you guys are sitting there saying no. It's good to now know. It's good we didn't we didn't have video back then because hate, I'm sure a lot of people. I hate that saying, doing- though. I, I, I hate how running backs are so undervalued in this fucking league because of the fact that you tell me not, you wouldn't you wouldn't give up a number two pick. Overall, number two overall for a uh, uh, Jonathan Taylor. They didn't take him number two, but you just look at highly high, like those elite running backs, like a CMC, like a Jonathan Taylor, you know, like a Le'Veon Bell when he was in his prime, like a like a Johnson when he was even in his prime. You know what I'm saying? Like you get all these elite running backs, and you can see the the obviously Derrick Henry. You see the amount of workload and how they can just change your team. Just by right. having an elite running back on your team, right? right? So the value of of I get it, I get it. In our case, it's like we didn't have an offensive line, we didn't have a team to to put a running back behind. So that was totally don't drop the running back that high if you don't have a team to put him behind. That makes sense. But I hate the fact that we undervalue running backs, man. Bro, they put their body at risk the most. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Well, here's a here's a thought that that Dave Gettleman said when he was drafted. He said a good a back like Barkley makes an O line better, right? So their piss poor yes. O line was made better because Barkley could juke everybody out. Now I'm going to throw a couple running backs out there who are drafted in the first round of drafts, and you, you, they're like, oh well, you know, running backs don't win championships. Well, guess what? There's a guy named Emmett Smith who uh, Ooh, won championship. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, I don't know if anyone knows Emmett Smith, but let's see what round Emmett Smith was picked. Oh, he was picked in round one. There's another guy named Adrian Peterson going to the Hall of Fame who was picked in round one. Now, did they win a championship? Everyone can say everyone can say no, but guess what? That defense is great. They're a quarterback away from winning championships. They tried to bring in Brett Favre and he failed. Okay. Another one who I'd like to bring up, but people tend to forget, LaDamian Tomlinson. Mm, Hall of Famer. I'm just yeah, saying you can pick you can pick guys where you want to pick guys, right? Now, Mm -hmm. what the problem with the Giants was is that running back wasn't essentially the need position that they wanted. Their philosophy going into that draft was Eli Manning is still here. 
we can make a run at this thing. Let's we we already spent money on Nate Solder, Patrick Omame, right? And they drafted a guard in the second round. Okay, Bill Hernandez. Right. White so they had, yeah. they had uh, th that's three fingers, folks. Three fingers. They they mm -hmm. went for the offensive line. Okay, three guys. Guess what? They cut Patrick. They cut Patrick Omame and replaced him with Jamon Brown, and the offense started to take off at that point. My point is, you can't say the guy didn't invest in offensive line. They just didn't work out. And that's the problem. Now you want to say revision is history. We don't know what a guy is going to do when he comes here. We could say Jordan Nelson, uh, Nelson would have uh, Quentin Nelson would have done well, right? We don't know because he's not here. We only know that he's done well and he was a stud with the Colts. Quentin Nelson now, could I have tripped in well, fucking training right? camp and never had a start with us. But think about this: there were three def three bona fide defensive players in 2018, 2019, 2020, and the, I think even in 2021 that you could have taken four guys. We'll we'll do four, right? The first guy on defense you let pass was Bradley Chubb. How's that working out for you? The second guy you passed, Josh Allen. How's that oh, working out for you? He's, he's the third guy you passed on was, um, I think they went with um, Isaiah Simmons. I don't know how well he's doing, but there was a third guy. Isaiah, Simmons, Isaiah Simmons is a boss. He's still young, but he's a boss. Right. So the third one, okay, maybe we don't go with the the, the, the draft pick there, but they had a chance to get um, oh, Brian Isaiah Burns. I was, a, I was a simp for Isaiah Simmons, bro. Right. And then the fourth one is, oh, no, you could have got Devin White. You didn't get Devin White. Devin you you, you could have traded up for Devin White. You didn't want to trade up for Devin White. You missed him. Guess what he's doing? And the last guy is Michael Parsons. He didn't fit our culture. I'm just saying. What culture? What fucking culture? Yeah, exactly. Culture? We're losing. Who cares what culture it is? We're losing. What culture is that? A loser culture? Yeah, we want a bunch of losers on our team. Great. Great job. Great culture, guys. We don't like his history. We don't like his history because he's a winner. Guy's about to be defensive rookie of the year. Whoa. Possibly defensive player of the don't year. Don't get me wrong. I love the I love the pick next year. I love I love Tony, you know. But 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 when you're looking at yeah. he's not only being he fucking, he's not competing for the rookie defense, he's competing for the defensive, the defensive yeah. player of the right, year. Right, right, right. And someone said the he's fuck? LT. I said, I said, slow oh, your roll no, because LT is yeah. one yeah, of the only de one of the only defensive players, not the only defensive yeah. player to win NFL MVP. That's right, folks. NFL yeah. MVP. Okay. So when Michael you Parsons can. does that, that's not fair. That's not fair to Michael Parsons. You don't show names at him like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. and that's, I mean, that's we don't so know if super unfair to LT. Well, right. My point is, we had a chance to fix the defense and we didn't. Mind you, we tried to in 2019. We went with Dexter Lawrence. We tried. Like we let Montez though. Sweat go. Montez Sweat, we could have had a chance to get. We decided, eh, well, we don't need pass rush. We don't need pass To be rush. honest, I did I did like that that that, that Clemson pick in, in Dexter Lawrence. I did, I, like I that. did too, <laughs> but you had Dal the you beast had in that season. You had Dalvin Tomlinson that year. It is, and, uh, yeah, there's no need. You know, it's kind of like you brought in then you brought in Leonard Williams the the that same year, right? On the contract year. Right. You brought yeah. in Leonard Williams and you know, what do we have now? Dexter Lawrence playing out of position, okay? We still have no pass rusher. I would have gladly have taken Montez Sweat, and then you have Montez Sweat and Aziz Ojolari, and away we go. So this year, people are like, let's draft off the line. Why don't we just do all 10 picks off of the line? Great, because the rest of the team, we don't need anything for. That's why I think you need a bona fide defensive player Drafted yeah. with one of those two first round picks, whether it's the first one yeah, or the I second. One. That. I don't. Care. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind going offensive line, offensive line, but it needs to get taken after that. If you're not well, going to risk the first pick, get it at the third is, pick. You know. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me put this. Put this on you. How many first round picks that the Giants have drafted are on the defense? Zero. Exactly. Yeah. And you want? And you wonder why the defense can't close out games. Okay, look at Joey Bosa. Look at the Bosa bros, Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa. Look at TJ Watt. You could have TJ Watt. Okay, could have TJ Watt. You drafted Evan Ingram. No, no, that's just not fair, Adam. Like, teach it. Like, when you bring up TJ Watt, that's just like that was things, he was you know what I'm saying? Nothing 30. against the Bosa brothers, the Bosa's are amazing, but TJ Watt's amazing too, you know. Like, TJ Watt for that Steelers, like, I'm take just... control, like, take control of that damn defense, TJ. 
I'm just I'm just saying there are guys out there to Gibson, be had. Exactly, Giants yeah. defense needs to have a bona fide player added to it. Not a half player, a bona fide player. Let's get a guy in there that you're going to build your defense around. All right, you already got two in the second round in McKinney and in Aziz. And technically, McKinney was supposed to be a first rounder, but he dropped for whatever reason. I have no idea, you know. But he dropped, and the Giants were he even said they were going to trade out, but McKinney was there. They didn't do it. Look at C.D. Lamb, okay, of the Cowboys. You know, we had a chance to pick him too. We didn't. You know, like we can go down the list of how many players we could have picked, but because of culture and because of this thing that we're trying to do, what do we do? New York Yankees? We're not. We can't be like, oh, well, cut your hair and be, you know, prim and proper. No, LT was a dog, okay, on the field and off the field. And guess what? We won. You know, I understand you want to take DeMontre Moore because he's lazy and, you know, didn't pan out for you from Texas A&M. Okay, fine. But when you got a bona fide stud on there, you take him. And I think Isaiah Simmons would have fit James Betcher's defense better than he's over in, in, in Arizona. Because what they were trying to do, that was the kind of guy they needed. They James, didn't want James to Winston? Excuse me? Not James Winston, I'm sorry. You said Isaiah Wilson? Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons, sorry, yes. I said when they had James Betcher and they were going to draft Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Simmons, they actually, it was next year. They needed a defensive player. He was one of the top guys that was being mentioned. And I thought Yo. because the Giants are running this amoeba defense, they would have, he would have been a good player to have because you could line him up all over the field. Arizona hold wasn't it, doing that. Hold it down real fast. I'll be right back in like two minutes. I'm using my Arizona wasn't doing that. So for me, the Giants need a bona fide defensive player. Bona fide defensive player. Don't give me a D tackle. Don't give me, you know. Some cornerback, we have plenty of those. Go out and get a linebacker. Go out and get a middle linebacker as well. You know, upgrade the defense. Doesn't mean doesn't slight the guys that are there. Like take Crowder, you still have a job. You know, let the guy come in and compete, compete. But mainly focus on the offensive line. I'm not saying don't draft an offensive lineman in the second and third round. They have two third round picks. Out of the five picks in this draft in the first three rounds, they should come away with maybe three linemen. A defensive player, I would prefer him in the first round because you have you'll you'll have a long time to build them. And then a, a a the fifth pick could be a tight end or a middle linebacker somewhere you you want you want right. And then Trey McBride, if he slips to the third round, that's a guy I would look at. There's a couple other tight ends I would look at in the third round, you know. And we also need a safety, mind you. I wouldn't even mind taking that safety for Notre Dame because. Pair him with McKinney, and oh boy, here we go. I'm just but saying that's that not, I know it's your Dame safety. You're going to have to put a first line up for that kid. Right. I'm just saying if you don't want to go. take back value, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. You could take back-to-back -back guard. You could take back-to-back -back tackles. If you want to go Neil and then Linden Bomb, fine. Whatever. Do whatever you want. I mean, I'm not is, drafting the team. Is that safety Neil? That's Neil, right? Is he uh, the Notre Dame safety? Is he valued of a, a top 10? Yes. He's a, he, they they he say is? he's in the top 10. He's that good. The question is whether or not you want to take him. For me, imagine, imagine him and McKinley, though. Exactly, McKinney and 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 the kid from Notre Dame, you know, yeah. would be great safeties, uh, and and it would change the dynamic of your defense. But again, you know, we don't know who's coming back. It's a little too early to be mocking it. But to me, I'm not taking a center right away because I can get a center later on with a second round pick. You know, look at um uh, Creed Humphreys. I think that guy's name was. I think he's a second round pick. You know, I think I think I could be wrong. It was Creed Humphreys. Let me let me just double check my my notes. I think here. Creed was a first round pick. You're right. He was a first round pick. Who yeah. was a second round? There was a second round guy who. Uh, I'm trying to look here that oh, yeah, someone just said to just to make sure that there was a second round pick here. Center. I forget. Someone mentioned it to me. Creed Humphreys went end of second round, best center in football. Wait, okay. he did? So let me just double check that so I know, so I'm not giving you guys false information. I love that. I love that. If you guys yeah. didn't get, please hit that sub button. Please hit that like button. Please click his link. Creed in the Humphreys was picked oh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs pick 63, round number two. Okay. And he was a two time Big 12 offensive lineman. All right, so don't tell me you have to draft them in the top with a top pick, okay? They got the best center in football, or one of them, in the second round. 
okay, of the 2020 draft. So let's just do – let's just quickly go through the 21 draft, and we'll pick out the first center. Let's see. QB went first. QB, QB tight end was Kyle Pitts, right? Then you had Jamar Chase, Waddle. The first off of the lineman off the board was P.D. Sue, who was a tackle, okay? The next offensive lineman was Rashawn Slater. And the Cowboys pause, 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 go pass, pause. You're the fucking Giants. All right? No fucking raise. This is probably what happened, but – do you think they even fucking take a chance to call the Lions? No. No? But the thing is this. You could have you could have drafted Slater. He went two picks after you. You stayed. Slater was right there, too. Didn't stop there. But, but, but when Penn and Sula is dropping like that, you should but, have been talk, taking the top five. What did you fucking call? That's a, that's right, a number my, three pick, you know? My, my question is, why were why were all your eggs in the Devonte Smith basket? Yeah, because it looked Devontae like it, Smith, huh? Devonte Smith got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles, and we traded out for Justin Fields. Who, by the way, Dallas ain't taking a quarterback. Rashawn, the Chargers weren't taking a quarterback, and the Jets took Elijah Vera Tucker, who's playing out of his mind. So two guys, Rashawn Slater and Elijah Vera Tucker, were both taken at thirteen to fourteen. By the way, that was a tackle and a guard. Not a center, tackle and a guard. Now, let's mm. just keep going down, right? Then there was Alex Leatherwood, who was taken at 17, who was a reach, who we think is a reach. Then a guy named um, Derrishaw, I think Christian Derrishaw, Derrishaw was yeah. tech from Minnesota, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the last, uh, the, the, the last 32. Okay, so the next tackle taken wasn't until the second round, and it was uh, from Miami. Again, a tackle from Jacksonville. A, a tackle. <laughs> Who Miami? Who did Miami take again? Liam Eichenberg. Eichenberg, yeah. Then they have Jacksonville. Phillips, Phillips in the league. Jacksonville and Cincinnati both take tackles. Another guard comes off the board and Aaron Banks from Notre Dame. Sam Consimi is on uh, is on the Texas. He's playing for Washington right now. He was in the second round. He was one of their high picks. And they have, oh, wait, look, a center. Josh Myers and Creed Humphreys, both taken by teams that are winning. AKA Green Bay and Kansas City. And those are 62 and 63. So you can get a center in the second round. So what I was saying before you, I don't know if you heard me, and I'm, you know, going to have to <coughs> head, out, head out soon. But the, I said that the Giants have five picks in the first three rounds, right? In the top probably 100 picks. I say you can come away with three linemen and two skill, two other players picks whether that's an outside linebacker or a tight end that's up to you you want to be fancy great so for me that's how i would do it okay get at least two linemen at least two you may need three i don't know what's going to happen in free agency it's a long off season we're in december the draft doesn't happen until april and the combine starts in february so you know all this is going to change all this is going to change we're going to be talking about and re-talking about till april what guys and then guess what we're not going to be happy with the guy that they choose if it's not the guy that we you know been talking about for weeks your mic's off all right we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here soon fam we've been going for quite a few but i love it um one last discussion you're frozen I mean, like, it's on. You have 17. Am I frozen? You have 17. Am I frozen? No, not anymore. Okay. You have seven. You have, like, I don't know, like, seven cornerback competition, right? All these other. Look at how old. I like the competition hires. So you're like, you're stuck with no competition, basically, in a way. You're right. <laughs> what the? F You're right. We have no no competition, and in the off the season, is, there's no competition at O line. The thing here's here's the thing though. I don't mind bringing back Sakura and or Billy Price if they're going to be backups. Mm -hmm. If you want to bring in them as depth pieces, fine. They know the offense. They know the system. You know, mm -hmm. bring them in. I'm not starting those guys. You know, Brad Bederson, for what it's worth, Bederson's going to be here because, A, yeah. you traded a fourth-round pick for him. B, you assumed his rookie contract, which he was drafted in the fourth round for the Ravens. So if you don't like the guy, first off, they're not going to cut him. That I don't think they're going to cut him that quickly because they invested draft capital in the kid. 
So there's competition there. Shane Lemieux's coming right. back. There's competition there. And you have Isaiah Wilson, who probably will be on a future right. deal. So, so there will- that was past that was past tense in 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 last year's offseason. So in this year's offseason, there were all the guys you mentioned. Is it stupid for me to say out of 90 people in the offseason, there should be at least 15 offensive line in the competing? Like we may know like I said, 20. A- I said there should be 20 guys. 20? I said 20? there should be 20 guys. 20 guys, line. right? Because last year, what did we have? Fucking 11? Right. Well, we had a lot of guys. They just were bums. Right. You know, you brought in Brett Heggie. You brought in some a couple other undrafted guys that were but bums. the fact, like at the start of everything, it's like what we had fucking eleven players to compete with. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it felt like that. Right. You start bringing right. in so, all these fucking practice squad players. There's a reason I'm not trying to be mean, but there's a reason why they're on a the practice squad because the people we got it from, it's not like they have the best O line in the league. You know. Right. 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 We we got a cast off from the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, the Cincinnati Bengals has such a great line, Adam. I mean, my God, they, I mean, Anthony wow. Munoz from the, I know. Yes. Not, I'm not I'm just saying. Mean, but you, can, you, 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 you as Giants fans, you kind of get the point, right? Like, man, we've been talking for a while, bro. I love this. And this is not a preview of what our, our podcast is going to be like. Our podcast is really going to be more formal, but each 10 minutes we're taking a different subject about different sports around the country and around the world, basically. Um, we might even cover, I don't know, drones. I don't know. We'll just try to cover <laughs> anything that's interested. But this is just a long 30-minute session. So I'm not probably going to title it 30-minute session. But I want to just thank you guys. If you guys watch this whole video, man, that means my absolutely world to me. And if you guys could please do me a solid and go down and, and click on Adam's channel and, and get his sub count up. You know what I'm saying? Let's let, we're a community here and let's all help each other grow because the knowledge that Adam brings is the reason why I wanted to have him as a co-host. And we've been talking about this for the last month, I would say, off and on. And uh, he's been looking for someone to do some content rent. I've been I've been looking for someone to do some content rent. And um, I think it all worked out for the best. So that being said, I'm going to let you plug what you need to plug and then we can get out of here, bro. Let's get it. Hey, I got it. I got my show. It's called The Hurry Up. It's on my channel. It's going to be in the description. It's, you know, it's a quick recap of sports mostly right now focus on the giants but we could i talk about whatever i have plenty of videos to 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 show that um divisional playoffs from 2011 and things like that nba finals i've done it all so that's what the hurry up is going to do if i if i deem something i need to talk about you know like Stephen a smith or skip bayless or throwing shannon sharp decide they want to mouth off sometimes the hurry up mouths off back and, and gives it gives it to you in a different in a different light. So if you're looking for content to get educated on, you know, have a conversation or just a different take entirely, subscribe to my channel and, um, you know, look at my videos and, and just listen to what I have to say. It, it, you may not agree. And that's not what I, I'm not here for everyone to, you know, wax poetic and be friends. It's the point of having a sports conversation is to debate the topics and, and see things from different sides. But, do it in a respectful manner because, you know, we don't need to go at each other. My opinion is no better than your opinion. It's just an opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And once again, guys, thank you. And ladies, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that sub button. If you feel like it, please subscribe. If you feel like it, um, December 11th, we're going to be, uh, you know, calling that MMA fight that UFC 269 previews for that. It's going to come out on the channel tomorrow. So make sure you guys go lock in on that and look at that and come join us on the live stream. That being said, I appreciate you guys watching today. I know it's been a while. It's been about two weeks since I uploaded the video, but bam, y'all get an hour and 21 minutes of great content. Y'all have a good Thanks for having me, Zion. It was a pleasure. And uh, sub up to this guy. He's doing big things. Appreciate that. Let's get it, Giants.